Welcome back to the Reef Care Program. In this episode, we'll be looking at the Algae Management Program. The Algae Management Program is all about setting and maintaining the desired levels of nitrate and phosphate, which are algae nutrients and therefore have a significant effect on all algae in the reef aquarium. I say all algae because on the one hand, we want to get rid of the nuisance algae that can quickly overrun a tank. However, on the other hand, we need to look after the beneficial symbiotic zooxanthellae algae that are essential for all so-called photosynthetic corals. The program itself is based on promoting a natural, biological process that can maintain the algae nutrients at a predetermined level without the need for reactors, resins, or other equipment, and which has no undesirable side effects. I'll explain how we do this shortly, but first, we need to understand the role played by the symbiotic zooxanthellae algae in their connection to the energy corals need. Corals host millions of tiny zooxanthellae algae inside their soft tissue. The symbiotic relationship is simple. Zooxanthellae are photosynthetic algae and use light energy to metabolize the carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus waste products of the coral. In turn, the zooxanthellae's waste products are made up of the carbohydrates, amino acids, and fatty acids, which are coral nutrients. In fact, the zooxanthellae provide photosynthetic corals with approximately 85% of the nutrients they require to fuel their metabolic processes. The zooxanthellae have a physical presence inside the coral soft tissue, protecting the corals from the intense light radiation by absorbing the light energy and shading the delicate inner layers. Reef aquariums tend to have higher levels of algae nutrients than in nature, which induces an overdensity of zooxanthellae, giving the corals a brownish color rather than their natural vivid pigments. This, however, is not always a bad thing. Slightly higher densities of zooxanthellae will provide relatively more energy, such as required for accelerated coral growth. But we must bear in mind that excessive densities of zooxanthellae will cause harm, so corals will only be able to display their natural colors at lower densities of zooxanthellae. However, there is more to this story. Exposure of the soft tissue to more direct light induces a photoprotection response. Similar to the way we tan when exposed to sunlight, corals will intensify their pigmentation by producing more chromoproteins, this, however, requires more energy as well as the specific minor and trace elements essential for their production. In the previous episode about the Foundation Program, I explained that accelerated growth requires energy. And a few moments ago, I said enhanced coloration also requires energy. So our job then is to create the right conditions. Higher densities of zooxanthellae, which supply 85% of the nutrients, combined with the elevated levels of foundation elements, will support the energy requirements for accelerated growth. Since corals are only able to display their natural colors at lower densities of zooxanthellae, to avoid an energy imbalance, we must reduce growth rates by lowering the foundation elements and increase the coral nutrients available in the water. The individual parts of the reef care program are coordinated to optimize the energy demands of the corals. Remember, everything is interconnected. In every aquarium with live rocks, marine substrate or porous filter media, there are anoxic areas that house colonies of nitrate and phosphate reducing bacteria. However, under normal conditions, there are not enough of these bacteria to reduce all of the algae nutrients that are constantly generated in an aquarium. Why? Because even bacteria need nutrients and minerals to flourish. Recently, reef keepers have been experimenting with vodka, or vodka, sugar, and vinegar, to regulate their nitrate and phosphate levels with various levels of success. Personally, I have better uses for vodka. Cheers. Now this got our scientists thinking, and after a few years of research and development, they came up with NO3PO4-X, or NOPOX for short, 
which is a unique complex of carbons and other elements that are used by the various nutrient-reducing bacteria, ensuring nitrate reduction to nitrogen gas and the absorption and utilization of phosphate. Nopox is formulated for daily dosing, and when combined with weekly measurements of nitrate and phosphate, enables gradual changes and the fine control of algae nutrients that are so important for the long-term health of all corals. The highly accurate colorimetric comparator test kits that we developed specifically for dosing nopox detect the very small but significant differences at ultra-low levels of algae nutrients. Full instructions for using nopox or converting from other methods can be found on our website. However, as a rule of thumb to get rid of nuisance algae and promote accelerated coral growth, we recommend a nitrate level of between 1 to 2 ppm. And for enhanced coral coloration, a nitrate level of 0.25 ppm and phosphate level of 0.02 ppm. So there you have it. Our algae management program contains the supplement and test kits which can best help you set and maintain the desired levels of nitrate and phosphate, ensuring optimal water conditions for your aquarium. To learn more about the biological processes that are going on in your reef and the role of the other sub-program in the RCP, see each of the episodes in this series. So get with the program and make the most of your reef.